Well, we now have our keynote interview. This is going to be Dr. Ed Silvoso. Uh, Ed has become a father in my life. Uh, he's somebody that has guided me and taught me what it is to be a good husband, to be a good businessman, to make a difference in the world. Uh, so many of the speakers that were here uh, looked to Ed as a leader. And in many ways, when I found out Ed was available for this event when I first scheduled it, I thought, wow, if Ed can be there, I have to give him the most time because I could just listen to you forever. <laughs> so why don't you come on up? Good to see you, Frank. Thank you. I do want to talk about Ed's book. It's called Ecclesia, and uh, the, the title is Rediscovering God's Instrument for Global Transformation. Uh, and, and I've learned so much about what really is transformative. You know, it's not an institution. It's not a box. It's, here, why don't you come on closer to the, to the glass for the camera? It's not a box. It's, it's not a, uh, a religious thing that you have. It's, it's transformative. It's tribes of people. So I'm so glad you're here. I would love for you to cast a vision for what could the Bay Area become in the next 10 years? Well, you know, as Michael Brown said, you know, the Bay Area is very, very privileged. Yes. Very privileged. Very we have so much going on. But, but this is the reflection that I have. Every time there has been a revolution, like the French, like the Industrial Revolution, it created a vacuum that gave breathing ground for violent revolutions. Mm -hmm. This is different because the technological revolution is being led by millennials. Millennials care about social justice. They are passionate about eliminating poverty, collaboration. So I see so much hope, Ian, because when this revolution reaches full swing, <clears throat> it will not concentrate the power in a few people that will exploit other people, but like Michael Brown has done, you know, it will really spread the wealth all over. So that's what I see. But I also see, if I may elaborate, a resetting of the world economy coming now. I mean, no one living off a credit card can live forever that way. So we live in perpetual indebtedness. So I see a dramatic resetting coming down. I mean, a global bankruptcy mm. that will reset everything back because we live in illusion. Money is unreal, is that? The real value is the land, is the property, is what we build. When that happens, I feel, Ian, that the millennials with their idealism and the older generations, you know, the Moses guiding them to cross the Jordan, we could really reset the world economy. Do, do you realize that one billion people live in a dollar a day? The next two billions live in two dollars a day. I mean, it could be transformed, you know, if we eliminate this artificial debt that we have created. So that's what I see coming and happening. And how do you see that transforming uh, the next generation? So if the millennials mm. drive this, mm. what's it like for our children? Yeah. Well, it has to be transgenerational, you see. What I love about the millennials, they are so spirited, you know. They're, but, but listen, they are here because they have parents. Those parents are a bit older than them. And those parents have parents, too. So what we propose and, and what we model is that we must work together. You know, people like Michael Brown, like Jackie Cena, like Jeff Taylor, like Sonia Linda, you know, we must work transgenerational. Yes. But us, the older folks, must believe that the younger folks mm -hmm. will go farther and higher than us. In fact, a great philosopher by the name of Jesus Christ said, you will do greater works than me. And what people don't realize is that Jesus was the most anti-religious person ever to walk on earth. I mean, he came against every form of institutionalized religion to empower the little guy and the little girl out there. That's what I see coming. I love that. Mm. 
you, you've introduced me to so many of these folks, right? Yeah. Albert, yeah. and of course, Jackie, yeah. and then, you know, Sonny and Linda, yeah. and Michael Brown, and Dr. Doherty. Um, how have they inspired you? I mean, you tell their stories, right? You talk yeah. about the transformation that they've brought in yeah. their worlds. Yeah. Talk to me about how you are inspired by those that you get to lead. Well, you know, I feel that I am more like an obstetrician that certifies a pregnancy, okay? <laughs> So I am not the father of the kid, you know, I have nothing to do with it, okay? But, but imagine, you know, when your wife or my wife got first pregnant, right? It never happened before. So they go to the doctor, and what does the doctor tell her? Basically reassure her. That thing in the morning is not a stomach ache. There is a life inside of you, okay? And basically what the obstetrician tells you confirms what you're already pregnant with and gives you some parameters. So when I watch people like Michael Brown, Dr. Doherty, others, boy, I rejoice and I learn so much. And then I have the, the ability, the God-given ability to capture things in writing and to say, okay, these are the values and these are the demonstration of the values. Yes. And that's why I feel we are gonna change the world. Yes. We are changing the world, yeah, yeah. Can I add one thought? Uh, you know, we had a, a dreamer speaking before. It really touched my heart. You know, here we have somebody who is making a contribution to America. If you ask me what do you see happening, I see in the next few years mm -hmm. the whole issue of whether you call them illegals or undocumented settled. But they will not be settled by our stuffy politicians out there. I mean, the right and the left, they are both missing. Mm. It will take an alliance of young people, idealistic people, yes. and ethnic people. If I were a leader in the, in the undocumented movement, I will call for a three sick day call. Mm. Imagine 14 million people calling in sick. Mm. Our country will come to a stop immediately. Okay, that will catch the attention of everybody and his uncle, right? But look how easy it will be to document them. We have the right saying they have to exit the country, go back and reapply. And the left is saying a bunch of nonsense. But look at this, Ciudad Juarez, a city across the border, has a consulate. They process one million visas a year, okay? There are five other border towns in Mexico and five in Canada. <clears throat> That's 10 towns with consulates that they process a million visas each. That's 10 million visas a year. Yeah. We could have everybody properly documented and re-entering the country. And under whatever conditions the right and the left agree to. So this is not an impossible thing. I mean, we can do it, and we can, uh, people of faith like us can bring together the, the, <clears throat> the sanctuary cities that the immigrants trust with the government that are charged with making the law, uh, you know, enforce the law. We can be those peacemakers that Sony and Linda were talking. You know, we can cut the deal. And so my passion is that we eradicate this cancer yes. because this is a nation of immigrants, mm -hmm. but it's also a nation of immigrants that became settlers. Yeah. They didn't come here just to rape the land and go back. They came here to make it big and bigger. And so I believe that it will be this generation of millennials plus a few older folks like us cheering them and leading them when they need to be leading. And we are gonna build an incredible future because everybody has been created in the image of the creator. I mean, this nation is great because what is the preamble to the Declaration of Independence? All men were found in the cabbage patch. No, they were brought by the stork. No, they were created by someone, okay? So we need to connect with someone and that will give us the power to overcome. Because look at this, you look at the baby that is a month old. 
Tell me, does she look like God or like the devil? <laughs> it looks like God. But then the injustice in the system, you know, deformed that. But like Sony was saying, there is goodness in everybody, but we need to be reconciled to the source. I believe there is only one way to God, which is Jesus. But there are many ways to Jesus. And that's what we need to understand. Goodness, work, education, done. You know, thinking of our fellow men. We'll take them to the one that will introduce us to that source. And when you connect with that source, you know that, Ian, because you live that, there is no limit we can really change the world. <laughs> For, tell me about strategies that you're most excited about this year for transformation. Because we've talked about immigration, the yeah. things happening with Juarez, mm -hmm. the things that could, that mm -hmm. could even happen in the United mm -hmm. States with that. Yeah. There's so many strategies yeah. that you've gotten me excited about. Yeah. Share with us, what are some things that you see happening unfolding in the next year? Well, let, let's look at, <clears throat> I mean, the ladies that preceded me, I was yes. very, very inspired by what they mm -hmm. are doing. You know, I wrote a book called Women Got Secret Weapons. That's right. I have no choice. I'm married to a woman, important. <laughs> I have four daughters, okay? I have nine grandkids. But l look at Michael Brown. People don't realize that 1% of the U.S. population is in prison. One percent, or, or half of one percent, whatever you want to call it, okay? So what, what excites me is when people like Michael and others, they are not the only ones, but they are the ones that I know, they really, really, really help people not to go back to prison. So that excites me. What excites me is what Dr. Doherty and Jerry Mercer and others are doing. This is a school campus that is a dream. I haven't, I had the privilege to be on the board as a chaplain to that. But, but you know, Dr. Doherty connected with the creator and he told him, my justice is never justice until it becomes social justice. You cannot have a school on the hill, I mean, with luxury all over, and you have a broken down public school system. Yeah. And that's, you see, that's what excites me. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, to, to see what Dr. Doherty and others are doing. So I'm, I, I, I'm so excited. You know, at my age, other people are playing bingo in a retirement <laughs> home. I'm going all over the world because this is life. And it's happening in Muslim nations, in Hindu nations, in atheistic nations, because you cannot, you cannot turn the ocean back, okay? Yes. People yes. are born for the purpose, and that's what we are doing. Mm. You seem to be more excited about life, your mission, your vision, your passion, your calling, yeah. Every time we're together, yeah. How do you keep your greatest days ahead of you? How how can we how can we live a life the way that you're living it right now? Well, there is a case study in this book called the Bible, and there is an old guy. Uh, you know, it doesn't look so old to me now. I'm turning 73 this year. Okay, when I was 17, a guy who was 85 was way over the hill. Okay, but this guy's name was Caleb. And Caleb told his boss, whose name was Joshua, he said, give me that mountain. That mountain is where the giants dwell. Because at 85, my strength is the same that it was at 40. So then I asked, what was the secret? Because, you know, 12 years from now, I'm going to be 85, right? <laughs> I mean, what is the secret to be as strong at 85 as you were at 40? And this is the second, and this is the answer, my answer to your question. Always look for a bigger fight, mm. wow. a bigger fight. I mean, don't be an echo of the past, be a voice for the future. I mean, look for something that you say, yes, I'm going to go for it. Mm. Like Queen Esther says, if I perish, I perish, but I choose where to perish. So I want my last check to bounce. Mm. I want to live all the way to the edge. I want to invest everything I have and then say, yes, that's how I, I, I keep my energy going. <laughs>
Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you for all that you do to make this happen. Yeah, yeah. thank you. It. God bless you. God bless you. Let's give Ian and, and his wife, Joanne, a big hand and their kids because you put this together, okay? I love you. I love you.